This video is part of a series. It's heavy in scientific terminology and may expect familiarity with previous videos. If you're confused, please watch the rest of the playlist up until this point, or check out my genetics terminology document, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks! Liver, also known as chocolate, is a mutation in dogs that turns eumelanin hairs from black to brown. The dog is still, quote-unquote, black-based because the hairs are eumelanin, but they no longer look black. This happens because the mutation, located in the TYRP1 region, which is the same place that causes chocolate in cats, causes the eumelanin to change shape. The light reflects off of it differently, and as a result, it appears lighter. The exact shade of brown can vary quite a lot, from a deep, rich, chocolatey color to something lighter and more reddish. The dog's eyes will also be lightened to amber. Their leathers change, too. A liver dog will always have a liver nose, which is somewhere between a deep brown and a light pink. In pictures I've seen, the darkness of the nose seems to correlate with the darkness of the fur, which makes sense. Even if a dog is totally red with no eumelanin hairs at all, their leathers will stay their black-based color. So a genetically liver dog, even if they're clear sable, will still have a liver nose. You can always tell what black modifiers a dog has, aka what color they would be if they were black, based on their nose. And their other leathers, of course, nose is just the easiest to spot. As for dogs with markings, liver only affects you melanin. So if you have, for example, a pointed dog with the liver gene, the black parts will turn into liver and the red parts will be totally unaffected. They might be super light or super dark, and this is totally independent of liver, totally unrelated to liver. Liver cannot touch red at all. Same thing goes for both dominant and recessive black and any other instance of eumelanin anywhere on the dog, including eumelanin bands on a goatee hairs. If a brindle dog has the genes for liver, then black turns into liver and red is unaffected. As for inheritance, liver is recessive represented by little b. Non-liver, so the gene for a normal dog with regular black, is capital B, which is dominant. Kind of? There's actually several alleles that cause liver, but they're all on the same locus. They all do exactly the same thing. They're all recessive to capital B black, so we just pretend it's a single allele for simplicity. And that's it. Pretty dogs, right? Given the hellscape of the last video, I bet you were expecting a lot worse. No, just simple dominance. It's so funny to give practice squares for such a simple two allele complete dominance locus in the video right after the one where I had like a whole crisis and meltdown. But, uh, here you go. Hopefully, if the last one was to throw you into the deep end, this one will be a smoother introduction for you. Two solid black dogs, each carrying liver. Pause to solve. Alright! For genotype, that's a 50% chance of a heterozygote, 25% chance of homozygous dominant for black, and a 25% chance of homozygous recessive for liver. For phenotype, that means there's a 75% chance for each puppy turning out black and a 25% chance for each puppy of turning out liver. Next video is going to go into more detail about red by covering the extension locus. I'll see you there.